I have always been a nerd. I used to spend huge amounts of time going through textbooks and textbooks worth of information comprising mostly of mathematics, computer science, economics, psychology, so that I could make myself much better. I always tried to learn. I love to learn. And learning caused me to see the world in a different light. I was a nerd who used to carry books, especially C++ books, when I was in third standard. And I used to pick up interesting looks on faces of people uh, who, who used to surround me. Probably thinking, why on earth is this third standard kid carrying a C++ book, which is usually taught to 10th standard students? Uh, after a while, I mastered the C++ uh, uh, language itself. And I did that all in a very short duration. At, at age 16, I was so fluent in C++ that I decided to write a book on it. And that made me wonder, what qualification does one need in order to write a textbook? Or what qualification does one need to actually create something new, build something interesting, or just innovate something out of the box? Turns out, you don't need a qualification at all. All you need is an urge, a curiosity that is present inside of you that motivates you to, to build and do stuff that people think impossible. At this moment, I, uh, in 10th grade, came across an incident that completely changed my perspective and my worldview. I came across an accident of a visually impaired person. And this prompted me to look into the lives of the visually impaired. Upon, after doing uh, extensive research, I found out that most visually impaired people, when put in a surrounding to which they had no prior exposure to, find it really hard to navigate around without having an aid. I wanted to create a device that would act like an artificial eye, giving them directions so that they could navigate safely. In the end, the device consisted of a camera and a headset. The camera would scan the environment and look for any dangers like potholes or traffic lights or even zebra crossing. And then it would signal back directly to the user through natural language. For instance, if there's a traffic signal five meters ahead of you, it would say literally there is a traffic signal in, in five meters in front of you. However, when I actually implemented this on, in, in a real life situation in real hu on real humans, I didn't expect the results that I really wanted to expect. For instance, I found out there were a significant portion of members who didn't like the idea at all, which made me think, why? Why didn't th this idea work out as I expected? Turns out, every innovation that you build has a drawback. And to understand the drawback, you need to understand this exact user experience. In order to understand user experience, you have to implement it in real life. I understood that notion after that point. I used to build devices on my own all the time. And this moment created an impact which forward changed that particular vision. When I was in 11th grade, uh, my grandmother passed away due to schizophrenia. And I realized later that this disease could have been detected earlier, thus giving her more time. Which made me ponder, why? What could I do? What could I do so that some other person won't lose their grandmother? After extensive research, I found out that most neurological diseases are really, really, really ch uh, hard to do, actually detect, mainly because most neurological disorders have this time lag period, during which the actual onset of the disease happens earlier prior to the actual appearance of their recognizable symptoms, during which medication could have been provided, thus extending lifetime. So my goal was to build a, an innovation or build a machine that would help diagnose these diseases earlier, even before the symptoms appear. 
So I hopped onto my computer and tried to do something. However, I couldn't find the exact resources that are required for these kind of projects. That's when I realized collaboration leads to innovation. So I set about to create a medical device that would help in this exact process. I had an idea, a device that would detect symptom, but I was just 15 years old. And in, in the worldview, most people just regard me as, as, as an age, and most people thought I was just a 15 year old who just had a random idea. But I was curious and I was determined. So I sent out emails to professors all over India, but I didn't receive any response. I sent even more emails. To be precise, nearly 500 emails were sent, but I didn't receive any response. So later, I cooked up a special batch of emails that I sent to same professors all, all over India once again. And this time, I struck gold. And I finally found a couple of mentors with whom I could interact with and brainstorm ideas at Nimhans. After, after, after a lot, lot of time, after a lot of brainstorming, after talking to doctors, after talking to professors, after talking to patients, I finally devised a device that would do the exact same task, which is to diagnose schizophrenia even before the symptoms occurred. So how did this device work? Well, the device consisted of a band and, of course, a central processing unit. The band consisted of sensors that recorded human behavior. And if there is any sudden change in the regular pattern, the device would signal a, an alert. The entire data that is collected by the device is sent through several algorithms which process this information and analyze this information and find possible correlations between the behavior and the actual schizophrenic symptoms. I spent two years on this idea, and in the end, the prototype that I built resulted in an accuracy of diagnosing schiz schizophrenia with an accuracy of over 92%. <laughs> Thank you. I was amazed at the power of collaboration and the ability to think differently. Fast forward to 2019, I'm still that wide-eyed, eager, curious kid, but I'm smarter now. I can think differently, I can collaborate, and I believe no matter what, I will be determined to do whatever I want to do. Problems bug me. I find anomalies in real life situations, and I try to solve them. And even if, if it involves sending 600 emails to several people all over the world, I will solve the problem. Thank you.